Look at that. I didn't even bait that hook. What is up everybody? So uh was out of town for just a bit. Took a little break. Family and I went down to Orange Beach, Alabama, and just hung out, relaxed on the beach, and had a good time. Did a little fishing while I was down there. But I'm back on the water for the first time in about 10 or 11 days, I guess. Last time I was on the boat was when Skeeter grabbed hold of the treble hook and ran it through her mouth. I got her back on the boat here, trying to get her used to it. She's a little bit skittish. And I got some covers that go over my treble hooks now. Crazy, crazy windy right now. The lake is just rolling. And uh, I don't have but about 45 minutes of daylight left. But I just want to run out real quick, see if I can catch a few channel catfish. And if I can get a few of them put in the boat, I'm going to take them home and give the new Whisker Seeker Fish Fry a try. Turn this into a catch clean cook video. So uh, let me go get set up, see if I can find some fish, and I'll be right back. So I'm going to come up here. Look at that. I didn't even bait that hook. Did not even bait that hook. That had just nasty old remnant of punch bait on it from 10 days ago. That's what you call catfishing right there. Get it back in there a little bit deeper. And we'll see what happens if a fish just flipped right over there. It's already got one messing with it. The bobber's still too deep. There we go. Who's your daddy now, baby? Who's your daddy now? If you never watched any of my videos and seen me fish like this, um, I'm really, I'm not, I'm not casting. I'm just kind of just lobbing the bait up in there. That's a good fish. Might be able to pull off that catch clean cook video after all. I don't need very many. But I'm really, I'm not casting up in there. I'm just kind of just flipping it. And really, when I when I get bit, I just kind of rip them out of there. So I'm fishing way up inside of this cover, and uh, you you can't mess with them and let them run around. You got to get them out of there quick because they'll get hung up really fast. There we go. There's a bite. Come on, take it, take it. There we go. There we go. Get on out of there. Good fish. Good fish. For a channel cat. Get it right back in there. They seem to like that. Right up around that tree. go better than the last boy it's hot and nasty 
up in this brush. I can barely breathe. Feel like somebody's sitting on my chest and got a wet blanket over my head. All this humidity. Don't you stick your head in that bucket of bait. And watching the dog and I missed the fish. never fails this fishing man like this you have got to watch the whole time you turn your head for a second see I've got my rod tip down towards the water I got slack out of the fishing line and I'm basically ready just to rip those fish out of there you keep that rod tip down towards the water um, it helps keep the line tight the wind won't blow as much with the wind and everything else moving around there um, and and when you're down like that you're in the position to sit that hook and pull those fish out you see there's just so much nasty stuff up up in, in here with uh, all these trees and sticks and everything else and there's all kinds of uh, hang-ups underneath the water that you can't see and uh, if you don't rip those fish out of there quick, then you'll lose them. So that's why when I'm, I'm setting that hook like this and fishing this way, it's, it's deliberate. Um, so I have that rod down ready to set that hook and just yank them out of that stuff so they don't get hung up. I really need to, there we go, that's getting bit now. There we go. This is my medium heavy um, GFX rod. I use these rods like this. I like to have a trigger when I'm fishing like this because I'm holding the rod and uh, it's just more comfortable for me. This is an Abu 5500 C3. I've got braided line on here. Um, this honestly I think it's probably 35 pound test. It may be 60. Um, this line has been on here so long. It's probably at least 10 years old, if not more. Um, yeah, I just don't ever break it off or have to retie it. And I use braid uh, fishing up in this stuff like this, but just because it's in this heavy cover and I can rip those uh, hooks out. If you use monofilament, you'll uh, be breaking off and and retying constantly uh, just a couple of split shot sinkers on here just need enough to make the bobber stand up and then this little bobber these are just little old cheap um, this is a comal tackle slip stick is what it's called it's just a styrofoam float um, slip bobber they're super cheap i buy them a couple three hundred at a time and then I've got my bobber stop right up above here, slides up and down the line to uh, adjust that depth. Now the most important part of this is the hook right here, and you can't see it because it's got this old stink bait caked all over it. But you want to make sure, I usually use a number six treble hook. I carry fours as well. and. Uh, if I start having a lot of problems with the fish swallowing the hooks, then I'll switch to a four. Uh, but number six is a really good size to start out with. I never use eights because basically if the fish are so small that I need a number eight hook, I don't want to catch them. Um, but the most important part of this is that you make sure you use a 4X strong hook. So it's a number six treble hook, 4X strong. The reason you want to make sure that you use those 4X strong hooks, um, that's the strength of the hook. If you use little old cheap treble hooks um, that are like 2X strong treble hooks, and basically the bargain basement ones that you can, um, cheapest ones you can buy, they'll break. I mean, you'll get maybe one, two, three fish off of them. When you go to take those fish out of the mouths of those channel cat, they'll break off. You'll go through 10 times more hooks and spend a whole lot more money versus buying good 
4x strong treble hooks or even 6x strong treble hooks if you can find them but buy those good hooks it, it'll save you a lot of money in the long run and more importantly you'll be keeping those lines in the water you can't catch fish when you're tying rigs this is just bubble blade electric fillet knife the nine inch mr twister fillet blades and all i do is i cut right through the rib cage there down to the spine and then cut all the way down the spine to the tail and then just cut the meat off of the skin and and do this other side here every time I show a fish cleaning video I get all kinds of mouthy people that come out of the woodwork tell me I'm wasting too much meat and I need to skin them and all this other stuff this right here that's the air bladder you notice when I'm cleaning these I bust that air bladder on every one of them reason is as I'm throwing these fish back in the water and if you don't bust that air bladder they'll float or they'll go down to the bottom and then they'll come back up and there'll be a big nasty mess of fish carcasses everywhere so you got to make sure you bust that air bladder open well we had a huge storm come in while i was cleaning those fish i don't know if you can see these flags up here behind me they're just straight out and it is it is rolling out here on the main lake these wa uh, waves are hitting this break wall over here and just coming over it it's a good thing i got off when i did and i didn't keep fishing because this storm wasn't supposed to roll in until about uh, 11 30 12 o'clock tonight it's come in early so i'm gonna get the boat loaded up so i got off the water pretty late last night had to dodge that storm didn't want to cook late at night so i saved it for the next day and given this new whisker seeker fish fry mix i got it all crumpled up there you can't really see it um, a try matt and the guys had this put together a while back it's something they've been working on for a while and i wasn't able to taste test it uh, when they were working on it so this is the first time i'm trying it here and uh, basically what i've just done is just uh, wash the fish real good in cold water got all the blood and everything out of them and then i just cut them up into tiny little strips i like to cook real small strips of fish um, in, in smaller pieces so they're good and crispy uh, they taste better that way to me and then they're also a lot easier to cook so uh, I just cut them up into strips after I cleaned them put them in a little bit of milk and soaked them while I was getting my oil hot and um, then dipped them in the fish fry batter rolled them all around got them coated real good once my oil got up to 350 degrees uh, then I just dropped the fish in there <clears throat> let it cook for about three minutes on each side and they're good to go and um, i just made some frozen hush puppies there in the air fryer one of these days i'm going to do a video and give you guys my hush puppy recipe guarantee it'll be the best hush puppies you ever had in your life and then here is the finished product of the fish um looks good we'll see so i'm gonna give it a try it's good it's got a good flavor to it it's nice and crispy and uh, it tastes good it's not quite as spicy as what i'm typically used to um, but i i have a tendency to kind of make my fish a little bit spicier um, and if i use any kind of bagged fish fry breading i um i usually add a little kick to it but i wanted to try this as is out of the box and uh, it, it's good i really i like it it's got a good taste to it 
I might put a little bit of hot sauce on it or maybe just a couple of shakes of Tony Shashery's Cajun seasoning or something like that, but it's good. That's the best fish I've had in a long time, but it's been a long time since I've cooked fish. I think this got cut out of the editing process uh, when I was out there filming. My wife and my daughter are sitting over there in the living room. But they don't eat fish. Neither one of them eat any kind of fish at all whatsoever. They won't come near any kind of fish. And um, so I don't cook fish a whole lot because it's just a lot of trouble to cook it for just myself. But uh, this is good. It's really good. I like it. I'm going to use it uh, from this point forward. And uh, I know Matt is working on some other variations for some additional fish fry products as well. So maybe there'll be a spicy version come along before too long. So uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned some stuff about catching channel catfish and cooking some fish. I've got a whole video on cooking catfish. I'll put a link down in the description. Tons of other stuff on catching ch summer channel catfish as well. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and head over to catfishedge.com for tons more catfishing tips, tricks, and information. And I'll put a link down below to this Whisker Seeker fish fry so you can go get some on the Whisker Seeker website. I know they've been running some deals here off and on the last few weeks trying to get this out and in the hands of lots of different people. Next time, we'll see you on the water.